flooding tends to be really tough on the very young trees and the very old trees. Uh, it's also tough on the sick trees. Those are, were unhealthy going into the flood. This tree, obviously a young tree, newly established, or not even quite fully established, and the top mostly died. And yet here, it is trying to survive. Good to see. This is a bur oak tree, native to North Dakota. And you can see this tree is fairly young. You can also see it's in pretty darn good shape after the flood. The lower branches have died, but the vast, vast majority of the upper branches, upper leaves, are alive. And that's great to see, and I think this tree will be just fine in the long run. And we'll compare that with some of the other bur oak trees that we see here. This mature bur oak tree, big old bur oak tree, is doing just fine. It's not over mature, it's not super old, but this tree is doing just fine and it'll shrug off this flood as if nothing happened. It's been through it before and it'll be through it again. Well, hopefully it won't be through it again, but uh, it's certainly adapted to this kind of an issue. And this bur oak tree here is completely dead on the top. All the branches, all the leaves uh, have died. But if we look along the main stem, new sprouts are coming out. And this tree actually stands a good chance of surviving. Uh, the only thing I'd really be worried about is deer eating the tips of this the, over the winter. But in the long run, these certainly could make uh, nice new branches if this is pruned properly into a nice new tree. Here's a green ash. It was uprooted by uh, the floodwaters as well as simply at the ground. It was so unstable after the flood with the, the wet ground, unstable soil, uh, it just came over. And unfortunately, we can't predict when and where this will happen. And if this does happen though, take the tree out uh, as quickly as you can. The whole idea here is, is to think safety. Safety of people and uh, take care of your property as well. In comparison, this big green ash here has been leaning its whole life. And internally, uh, structurally, it's sound. There's structural mechanisms to keep it standing. It's not going to fall over anytime soon, at least it shouldn't. You know, barring any major windstorms or any uh, major events, this tree should be just fine and I feel perfectly safe standing on the underside. As you can see on this tree, you can see the height of the water uh, that came through here. One thing that surprises me so far is that these trees are still alive on top. I totally expected all the spruce trees, all the pine trees to be dead, all the evergreens. Uh, yet there's still some living tissue. Is this going to survive next year? I'm not really sure. I'm expecting that it won't, but I certainly wouldn't cut it down right now. I'd let it sit a year, go over the winter, and see what comes out next year. If it's growing on top next year, then it might have a chance. Floods cause roots to drown. Roots need air. And when the floods come in, the air pockets are filled with water. And flowers and other herbaceous plants, non-woody plants, flower, which includes flowers and lawns, they don't have a very extensive root system in many cases. So they're very sensitive to flooding. It's not uncommon for them to die after even just one week underwater. And so these are goners, and now what we're seeing is some some weeds, in this case, purslane, coming in, filling it out. It's too late to do anything about this this year. One thing we could consider doing in the fall is it's going to be a good time now to get the garden ready for next spring. And one of the first things we can, well, these are just annual weeds. They're just going to die from our cold winter. But this is a good time to improve your soil, put in an inch or two of compost this fall and that will help improve the water infiltration of the soil, the drainage. It also can help buffer any potential toxins that were brought in from the flood. So I think one of the best things we can do is add an inch of compost in your flower bed and do it this fall, work it into the soil, and you'll be ready to get going in springtime. Areas of plants that were underwater, that were submerged, have a hard time surviving. And you see here, this is death brittle wood, and this isn't likely to come back. We're gonna to have to rip these out and replant next spring. Turf is very sensitive to flooding, and in many cases, if, if water is, if the 
flood waters are on the turf for more than a week, the turf may die back. Now, the good news we have in this situation is as we head into fall, this is the best time of the year to renovate a turf. And so in this situation, the turf, it's dry, it's fairly dry, but you got a heavy crust here that's developed. We need to aerate the soil. This is a compacted ground just because of the sheer weight of the water upon it. So we need to loosen up the ground and something vigorous in this case, like a power rake would be advised. We're gonna rip open this ground and now we got till mid-September to put in some grass seed. So we got a nice window of opportunity to prepare the soil, have a uniform seed bed. Don't let the layer of silt stay on top and form a crust. We're gonna work it in, have a smooth uniform seed bed and get the grass seed in by mid-September.